Welcome back, Surrive Outdoors, Dan Williams. Today we're talking about cryptosporidium and filtration of water out hiking, backpacking, camping. There is a ton of information on uh, YouTube and I'm telling you there's a lot of misinformation out there. So the three main bugs that you have to be concerned about are bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Um, in North America, you really don't have to worry about viruses in the backcountry. Norovirus, uh, rotavirus. Now, in rural urban areas, sure. I mean, it's actually one of the major causes of diarrhea in children, like daycare centers. Uh, diarrhea lasts one to two days. It's self-limiting, and in two to seven days, it's completely gone. So let's not worry about viruses in North America. You're traveling overseas, you better be darn concerned about that. And we'll get to the filtration um, mechanisms down the road here. So bacteria, you're looking at cholera, uh, Campylobacter, uh, Salmonella, Shigella, E. coli, Legionella, and then with um, the parasites, you're looking at Giardia and Cryptosporidium. So, <clears throat> I want to mention that there, there's so much misinformation. There's a guy on YouTube I totally respect. He knows his bushcraft skills like up one side and down the other. And he's doing this video talking about you can drink water from this stream or this placid lake and he feels comfortable with it and he's been doing it for a long time without boiling the water. And he says, well, there's no beaver in this lake so I should be okay. Well, I'm here to tell you, Giardia is not just beaver. They used to call it beaver fever because it rhymed and it was funny. But there is, it comes from deer, uh, squirrel, even birds can cause giardia. And so we'll get into that. And I'm not going to suggest drinking out of a stream in Colorado. And we'll explain why down the road here. There is basically no safe water to drink in North America, even if it's ice cold. So, and you can pull up any medical text to verify that. And I've treated personally some individuals that have been to Colorado and they basically have either used filtration like a Sawyer system and they have gotten sick. And we'll explain why that might be. And it's no diss against Sawyer. Before we jump into this, if you like wilderness medicine, if you like learning about injuries in the outdoors and how to treat them, gear reviews, survival technology, how to get by in the woods, then hey, give me a thumbs up and subscribe because you're going to get notified on down the road on everything from splints to infectious disease to things you can get in the outdoors, deer stand injuries, you name it. We're going to be targeting that over the next few months. All right, so cryptosporidium. It is a parasite that has one tough capsule on the outside of it. It is very, very difficult to, um, to get this bacteria, this parasite, excuse me, out of the water. You cannot use bleach, that will not work with it. Uh, filtration, yeah, it can work, uh, but for the most part, it's very, very difficult. This organism is responsible for closing down city pools across the United States. Personally, I've treated about six cases of cryptosporidium in the last 10 years. It's reportable to the Department of Public Health. Uh, it's very common in terms of uh, transmission from hand to hand, from person to person, not washing their hands well enough. So let's talk about the size of this parasite. So filtration is measured in microns. So a single strand of hair is 75 microns. Cryptosporidium is about 0.3 to 0.5 microns. And viruses are 0.004 microns. So it's no wonder the viruses can't filtrate through the Sawyer and the Catadine V3. And when they're clogged, or partially clogged, you can get a 20 to 30% backflow of Cryptosporidium, even though that, the, let's say the Sawyer and Catadine has their filtration down to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, you can get that backflow and that's how you get Cryptosporidium from these filtration systems. It only takes 10 of around average 10 of these guys to you ingest in your mouth for you to get cryptosporidium. So think about that. That's that's huge in terms of the, how contagious. 
So you got to be really, really concerned and careful about that. Even when they chlorinate the pools in, in city areas, that they, the chlorine won't, they have to hyperchlorinate the pool, in other words. It's a longer time of chlorine and it's an increased dose of chlorine to nail this. Um, so if someone comes into the clinic, I want to know, have, have they been traveling in the last two weeks? Have they been camping? Have they been hiking? Have they been swimming? Were they in a local river fishing or swimming? Did they take their can of beer or their six pack and take a string and put it in the river to keep it cool, not wipe the top of their can off, open it and drink it? That's significant. That's another way you can, you can get cryptosporidium and or giardium. So I want to know the history. The incubation period on this is about two to seven days. Uh, so if I want to know two weeks ago, where were they at? So the symptoms on Cryptosporidia are bloating, fever, headache, cramping, uh, diarrhea, seven to 11 times a day on average. It's intense, it's uncomfortable, and it's a pain in the butt, literally and figuratively. So I want to mention very, very important. Um, I'm going to give you a, a, a true scenario that happened to me back in 2000 and one, I think it was, I was in the Grand Teton National Park and there was a big commotion about, I was about 30 miles north and east up in Yellowstone. A Boy Scout troop was hiking and camping and one 12 year old got lost. And he was not found for about a week and he was found deceased down by a river and he died of dehydration and he was literally only 30 to 50 yards from the water. If you're lost and you're in the woods and you don't know how to get back and it's more than three days, you know the rules of three, three, three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food, drink the water. <clears throat> Teach your kids, everyone. You'll get sick, maybe, and then we'll treat you when you get back to the clinic. But if you're in that situation, three days, you're getting you're really thirsty, drink the water. So that's pretty important. Okay, so prevention. Filters. Okay, so we're going to talk about filtration. Now, there's filtration and purification. Purification would be a tablespoon of bleach into a gallon of water. It tastes a little funky, but it takes care, of, definitely takes care of the bacteria. Um, but it will not take care of cryptosporidium. UV light, sitting it out in the sun for a period of time, doesn't take care of cryptosporidium. Filtration. You have the Sawyer, which I've used. The Sawyer Mini Squeeze, very popular. You have the Catadine. You have the Life Straw. So, some of these work, some of these don't work. Now, one of the standards that I want you to look for when you purchase a filtration system is the NSF criteria, National Sanitation Foundation, NSF. And what that is, is they have, they rank these and they test these and they have to meet the qualifications. So an NSF of 231 to 248 is the actual best numbers you can find. You'll see 42 to 53. And when they have those on there, you go, oh, it's NSF approved. It's at 53. That is just for taste and clarity. That is not for filtering out uh, the organism. So remember that. And I'll put this down at the, in the um, description, the actual numbers, what you want to look for. So in Sawyer, great company, great product. 2015, they, kindly, they kind of screwed up a little bit. So what they did is it wasn't... Was it deception? Eh, maybe it was. They were touting the fact that this thing, their Sawyer squeeze, could take care of viruses. They've since corrected that. It is a very good product. Catadine Be Free. Oh. This is what I use now, the Catadine Be Free. Very comparative to the, um, to the Sawyer squeeze. Now, and the Life Straw. I've tried that. The Life Straw, forget about it. If you're out hiking, Man, you have to suck on that straw. It's very difficult to get hydrated with that. And they clog much more frequently than the Sawyer and the Catadine. 
One of the cases I had with crypto was a, a guy that was out in Colorado that was hiking. And what happened was, is that he was using the Sawyer Squeeze. Now, did he, did, was it the fault of the Sawyer Squeeze? Was there some human error? Human error is very common. Now the Sawyer Squeeze touts that it can filter out down to 0.1 microns. So it should take care of cryptosporidium. However, you have to, after every use, you have to take the filter and wash it out very well. So there is that little bit of an issue where people are in a hurry, they're dying of thirst, they ah, hell, I'm not going to get that. It's something that you can't visually see. You can't see this organism. And the water looks crystal clear. It's a running stream. You know, some people say, well, I've walked 100 yards up there. I didn't see a dead carcass. Well, did you go 125? Did you go 150 yards? And it's not from dead carcasses as much as it is from defecation of animals in the water. Giardia, for example, is found in running streams. I swear to you. So what I do with this catadine is I'll take, like I showed you before, I'll take a bag of water and I will take and snip just a tiny hole off the end here. And what that'll do is give me a pretty good stream to take that and really irrigate the heck out of this. And I will swish it around also, but if you do this, you're going to, really hard, you're going to clean, just like you would a wound on your leg, you're going to really clean this filter. If you ever decorated a cake, same phenomenon here. We're going, this is what you need to do. You need to clean this out after every use. I can't stress that enough. So that's one of the things, and that basically helps avoid human error. So yeah, go ahead and use the Sawyer. Use the Catadine Be Free. This is, in my opinion, better. You get more flow of water. Um, on the Sawyer, you can definitely attach that to the Smart water bottle. That's really nice. Um, the best move you can do to filtrate or to purify your water is to boil it. And then there's all this contrary. Do you boil it for a minute? Do you boil it for five minutes? All you need to do, get to a boiling point, boil it for one minute, and you're done. Swear, one minute, that's it. Now, yeah, it takes time. It, it, it does. But you're hiking, you're backpacking. Sit back, relax. Throw a pot of water on. Enjoy the surroundings. What's the rush? So, boil your water. Really helpful. The life straw. Clogs up. Not a big fan. The best filtration system out there, and I have reviewed and looked at a lot of them, is it's called, don't get it confused, I'm going to show a picture up here of the life straw. It's the life straw mission. It runs about $175, and it's a combination of gravity with filtration, and that one right now on Amazon is back-ordered, but it gets rid of viruses, parasites, and bacteria. It's used all over the world, and it's an awesome uh, filtration system. It's not that heavy. You throw it in your pack, and you have peace of mind, so you won't have any of those, those little critters in there. So with Cryptosporidium, if you did nothing at all and no treatment, you would probably get better in about two weeks if you stayed hydrated. I mean, so a person comes in, I get, I do a stool culture ova and parasites. I send it to the lab. I find out they got crypto. I'm doing Imodium to slow down the motility so they can be somewhat comfortable. I'm, they're going to be nauseous. Sometimes I'm going to give them some Zofran to help with the nausea. I'm pushing Pedialyte, Gatorade, fluids, pumping the fluids. So if I help the nausea, they're going to keep that down and they're going to get better. There are treatments for crypto. Um, there are <clears throat> nitazoxanide, which came out a few years ago. And the brand name is Alina or Alinea, A-L-I-N-I-A. And that works really well. And you can use that for kids one year and older. And immunocompromised individuals, you can use paramycin, 
with azithromycin, and that has a really good outcome. Um, however, there are some resistant cases, and this can last for a while. Um, so be advised of that, that there are some situations where you don't get cured right away. It can be a difficult uh, organism to kill. So, boil your water. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to use this. I'm out in the Tetons. I'm out in Montana. I'll use this. No, no question about it. Um, but if you're in an area that you feel it's a little sketchy, you're concerned, boil the water. Not a huge deal, man. Questions, concerns, thoughts? Throw them down there. You got some ideas for me? Throw them down there in the comments. We'd really appreciate it. Hey, stay safe. Keep your eyes on the horizon, face to the wind. Stay hydrated. Take care.